Hey everybody, Will from Studio Zombie 3D taking a quick look at my Cura setup. I have Cura 4.10 loaded up here. And the first thing we're going to do is add our printer. Alright, let's take a look at the settings for the Viper. We're going to go into Preferences, and then we're going to go down, click on Printers, and then we're going to click on Add. We're going to choose any cubic, and then we're going to go down, and we're going to find the i3 Mega. We select the i3 Mega, and we're going to rename it to Viper. Once you're done, just hit OK. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the printer and machine settings for the Viper and change the build dimensions. For the X, we're going to put in 250. And then for the Y axis, we're going to change that to 255. And then finally for the Z, we're going to set that to 265. Everything else in here can stay the same. I added a preprint purge line to my start G code, which I'll put in the description. I also has a link to my current Viper profile as well. Here's just a look at some of the plugins I have installed on my Cura. The one I highly recommend is the setting guide. That way, every time you go over a setting on the side here, it'll give you a more detailed explanation of each of the settings as you go. First up on the side here, we have our quality tab. I have my initial layer set to 0.28. I find I get a little better adhesion this way. And then my layer height, I will change based on the print. 0.12 generally for fine detailed prints and 0.2 to 0.28 for simple objects. The line width I use, I generally leave at 0.4. The only other change is, is 0.48 for the infill and it for the support, which I find helps the support and infill print a little more solid. Moving on to the walls tab, I have mine set at 3. This rarely changes for me. Sometimes I will use 4 or more just for some extra strength. Some people prefer to use 2 walls, but I find there is more risk of the infill showing through the skin. I always leave optimized wall order checked and I leave the outer walls before inner walls unchecked. You'll get cleaner walls with it unchecked and overhangs tend to print a bit cleaner and stronger. When checked there's always a chance of overhangs drooping and not printing nearly as clean. The only other settings that change for me in here is the seam position. I find that sharpest corner and smart hiding do a pretty good job most of the time. But there's the odd print that I'll manually tell Cure where to place the seam. I generally use the back and then I'll orientate the print so that the part where the seam is, is a part that you generally won't see when the finished print is together. Next we have the top bottom section. Here nothing really changes for me. I use lower bottom layers and tend to print 6 to 8 top layers. I find that gives me a nice finish up top with less chance of gaps and space showing up in the final print. The pattern I use stays at zigzag and overlap at about 20%. This way I find it helps reduce gaps between the skin and the walls on your final print. Continuing into the infill tab, there are a couple options I changed based on what prints I'm working on. First is your infill density. For most prints, I generally use 25%, and the main patterns I stick to are grid, cubic subdivision, and quarter cubic. But that's more of personal preference. I suggest you try out all the different patterns to see which you find best. One bit of advice though, if you do tend to try out gyroid, make sure you use a lower density. Gyroid is a really nice, very strong infill but at higher densities, your printer might vibrate apart. With the aforementioned setting guide plugin installed, as you go over each of the infill patterns, it will give you a nice explanation of each of the different infill patterns, strengths and weaknesses based on what you're printing. One suggestion is, when using grid infill patterns, I like to use two steps of gradual infill. This increases the infill to closer to, surf to the surface of the print, producing a cleaner top with less chance of gaps and sagging. I also leave infill before walls unchecked, reducing the chances of the infill pattern showing through the walls of your final print. Here in the material tab is where you have your printing temperatures and your flow percentage. I generally have my initial layer set 5 to 10 degrees higher than what I am printing just to help with the bed adhesion. Under that is your flow percentage. This you will calibrate by printing a single wall cube at 100% flow and taking a measurement. I have my first layer set a couple percent higher, same with the infill and support to help those supports and infills print a little bit stronger. Moving down into the speed tab, I have my speed set at 70 and I've had no issues even with small detailed prints. The Viper can print much faster. I have had success printing up to 150 millimeters a second with clean results. I have my outer wall set to 35 to 40, which produces a nice clean finish and helps reduce ringing. 
I also tend to print my infill and support a little bit slower, but that's more personal preference. I suggest you experiment with these speeds to see what you find works best for you. Just as a side note, I also use this same profile to print my TPU, and the only changes I really make is to change my speed down to 45 millimeters a second, and then I will reduce my retraction to 1 to 2 millimeters, and I haven't found any issues with this profile so far. I have also increased the travel speed from the 100 millimeters per second in the stock profile up to 120. Underneath that we have our acceleration and jerk setting. Currently I have my acceleration set to 1500 millimeters and my jerk at 13. This works really well for me so far but I suggest you run some tests and tune this and find out what works best for you and what you're printing. Next up we are moving down into the travel tab where we have your retraction and your Z hop settings. Retraction is great for reducing blobs and stringing but temperature also have a very important effect on it. If you find you have excess string despite increasing retraction, I find reducing your printing temperature by about 5 degrees will help reduce it. But this will all vary based on the materials you are printing. And right below this tab we have our cooling and nothing in there ever changes for me in any of my prints. Moving down into our support section, I find my Viper prints really well with an overhang angle of 60 to 65 percent. I have zero walls and I keep my density to 25 to 30 unless I'm using tree supports which I'll lower to 5. Underneath here we have our distance options. Over the years I've tried a lot of different settings and I've found 0.2 gives me the best support and ease of removal. Any lower than 0.2 I find it's really hard to get support off or they get stuck. Any higher and you face sagging issues on the print itself. I also like to use support roofs which prints a pattern for the print on top of the support itself. I personally like grid at about 50% density. I also have used towers checked off. And then we have our build plate adhesion section. With your skirt, brim and raft options. I generally myself use brims to help print stick to the bed but will often use skirts depending on the part itself. I also have brim replaces support checked off and brim only on the outside checked off. The next couple tabs under support never change for me so we'll move on to the final tab, the experimental setting. Underneath our experimental setting tabs I have infill travel optimization checked off. Also coasting is a handy option to help reduce disease seam and help reduce retractions but I find the stock settings under coasting work pretty well for most prints. And here I have my overhang angle set at 55% and speed at 60 just to help reduce chances of sagging on the overhangs as it prints and I find it works pretty well for my setup. I think even increasing it to 80% speed would help reduce the chance of sagging on all overhangs and worth trying out. There is also a checkbox for adaptive layers which comes in handy with several types of prints. I suggest testing it out to see how it works for you. At the bottom here we have small hole size which I have found to be super handy in slowing the printer down in smaller more detailed section of prints resulting in less chance of shifting and sagging or other issues with such small pieces. Alright everybody that was just a quick look at my cure setup for my Viper printer. Thanks for watching and as always subscribe and check out my Instagram to see what's going on with the studio at the moment. Any questions or suggestions for future videos or if you need a hand or something, drop me a comment or you can contact me on Instagram. Take care everybody and we'll see you in the next video.